I've actually already started glazing this piece. I did it, uh, approached it in two different ways. And I wasn't happy with the my ability to to track or control the amount of glaze that I was putting on it. So, which puts me back at square one. So I cleaned all the glaze off. And what I want to do is I want to, these joints in here, I want to glaze those red. A hot tamale, mako, stroke and coat um, glaze. And then I want to glaze the face of these in a stroke and coat cottontail white, the face. So the way I approached it, so first when I glazed, I was using a syringe. So I was using a syringe. And because these are bevel brick, I wasn't able to get to the top of the brick, which meant I had to paint it. So with the syringe, you really get a heavy amount of glaze down in those joints. And then if I'm going to paint it, then it's going to go down in the joints even more. So I'm kind of losing control. So I decided I need to just paint all the joints all the way. Now, when you paint it inside those joints like that, what happens is, is I get glaze on the face. So then I have to come in with a little tiny sponge and I have to clean it off. And then while I'm cleaning it off, I have to be careful that I'm not, I'm not accessing the glaze, cleaning off the glaze off the edge of that higher side beveled edge. So this process of glazing, it just takes forever. Now, another thing I do, another thing, an additional thing that I realized that was happening when I was glazing is I wasn't doing a routine that was efficient, that made sense that allowed me to control a section without over glazing again. So what I did is I just said, well, I'm just gonna do some practice runs. So I found a herringbone pattern on uh, on Google and I just printed it, up on, printed it up on a Word document. And so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll approach the glaze in this way. And then I, you know, I just, I guess that, that could work, you know, and so I, I did that and then I thought, okay, then I'll approach it this way, you know, not then, I'll either do it this way or I'll do it this way. And then my first, my first one that I actually did is I went down and I just went over and over and over and that's how I glaze it. But the thing about it is, is I'm not continuing the continuation of that line right there. And so when I would do the rest of this, I would be over glazing this joint. When I would do the rest of this, you know, when I come back in and do the rest of it, I'd be over glazing. Plus that routine doesn't really repeat itself properly. So then the areas with the red marks here is how I'm going to approach it. So I'm literally going to come through and I'm going to glaze a line all the way through from beginning to end, from beginning to end. From beginning to end and I'm just going to go down the whole line the whole line so I'm going from from T to T without doing the T part I'm just doing the vertical part of that T either bottom or top so I just do the line 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 now when I glaze on these because it's so repetitious I have to be really, really, I, I need to be really careful. So I have these cards. So, and I have additional cards that basically say what type of run I'm going to do. When I speak of run, I'm speaking of, of, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll do six bricks in a run. So, and I have a set of cards. I'll reach over here in a minute. that describes the type of run. Sometimes I'll do a 16 piece run. 
but I would probably do a six piece run on this. So a six square joint run. So I would have this sit to the side. Just to remind me, I'm doing six piece runs. I won't really touch that. So when I'm doing a six piece run, I'll glaze, I'll glaze, I'll glaze, I'll glaze, I'll glaze for six joints. And then when I have one set done, I'll put that one to the side because I've done it one time because I put three coats on. Then I'll go in and I'll do it again. Glaze, glaze, glaze for six times. Second coat complete. And then I'll glaze, 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 third coat complete. I'm done with that section. So by doing it this way, I always am able to track. Now it may not work out that it's six at the bottom. And sometimes I put a dot to the side to let me know where my starting point was. You know, just little things to control it. Now the whole point of that is, is that, is due to the fact that if I put too much glaze on, it'll run, or if I don't get enough glaze on there, it'll show. You know, by being, you know, less glaze would, in this case, would make it more translucent. So I want it to be consistent. And being that this is so repetitious, it's just so easy to forget. You know, the phone rings, the phone rings, or somebody knocks on the door when I'm in my process, I just, I don't answer it unless I'm finished with a, unless I'm finished with a, a coat. So if the phone rings or something, and I'm on the second, and I finish the second, I put this over here. At least when I come back, I know I'm on the third because the third is right here. But I really like to finish all three coats before I stop or stop, start or stop anything. But I do things like this all the time. I have a, a Surface Book 2, which allows me a computer that allows me to draw on. And so I'll take a picture of one of my spheres and I'll paint the colors that I intend on using so that I can get a sense of, of whether I want to do this color or that color. Now, the different colors here aren't some aren't representative of the colors I'm going to use in my glaze. It's just to differentiate. You know, I did this layout that didn't work. And then I just found out this whole one line thing works really, really well. You know, and I'll come in here and I'll do this one line. So now this can take weeks to glaze one of these pieces because once I get all the red in, then I have to do the white. And the key about the white is that I don't want it to bleed into the red. So that's when these come into play. And I wear these goggles. Um, went to the dentist a while back and they had these really cool things that I might, might get at some point that actually has a light and it looks a little bit more directed but that works really really well so i have to, so it's extremely important especially on the first coat because glaze isn't like paint it's i don't know how to describe it other than a really fine it's like a really fine dirt with water and you got to keep it stirred up otherwise uh, the water separates from the material it's just like you know me being a bricklayer um, you know, when you mix, the reason why a concrete chuck, when it's driving down the road, well, that's part of the reason why it turns is because the water will separate from the cement, the sand and the gravel. They will literally separate from each other. And then you won't be able to turn it. The other aspect is, is, is with water being in a truck like that, if it's not spinning, but it's more so because it'll settle. So whenever like, I'm on a job site, my guys are mixing cement in our mixer, you do not shut off the mixer paddle. It's got to keep on going until the cement is gone. Mortar is different. Mortar has lime in it, so it maintains a, a, a consistency to it. And that's why, you know, when you lay brick, you lay block, you're using mortar, which really what makes it a different for the most part from, from concrete is that it has lime in it, um, which gives it a, a continuity, a stickiness, uh, it makes sure that the, the properties are more consistent. So, and that's part of why when you watch guys finish a 
I know I'm going off track here. When you watch guys finish concrete, they have those big uh, floats that come back and forth. And a lot of what they're doing is, is, uh, is moving the water off the top as the water separates from the, the concrete, well, you know, from the cement, from the mixture. Because, you know, it's funny because people say, oh, they're pouring cement. No, they're not. They're pouring concrete. Cement is an additive in the one of the ingredients that creates concrete. So back at this. So I have to be really, really careful when I do the white that I don't exceed the edges. And so I'm literally squaring off the exterior parts of this, making sure not to bleed. If it does bleed, I will scrape it out and redo the red in that section, but it really does. And then once I get it, I get it squared off, I get it edged off, then the second coat and the third coat, it's a little bit quicker because it has a, a consistent property for it to flood into. So you got to really take your time with the first coat, the second and third coat a little bit quicker because it won't exceed its common property, meaning the white glaze has a common property that, that is different than the common property of the red glaze, and it typically won't go over that edge, so to speak. Um, so now I'm going to start glazing, and, um, and I'm going to deal with paintbrushes. And it's going to be really, really slow, but I actually like that. I actually enjoy it. Kind of time I lose, it's like I lose time when I'm doing this. So there you go. A little short video about how I'm going to approach this. After I get a little bit glazed, I'll take some pictures and, and shoot it. And see, this is another reason why it's hard for me to uh, generate content. You know, I mean, I'm trying to build my my Instagram following up and, or my YouTube channel and things of that nature. Um, but it's really at some level difficult to generate content because, you know, I mean, I do have a wheel right there in front of me um, and I do throw, but I don't particularly, it's just, it's just not my forte to throw. Um, and so it's hard, you know, I, you can throw multiple, I can throw multiple bowls in a day or cups or, or plates or vases or things where this, it can take me, I've had pieces that take me eight hour days every day for three weeks, sometimes even longer, depending on, you know, um, and this one could be one of those pieces, but, but we'll see. So there you go.